by now, we're all pretty much used to the traditional lake effect snow that forms in bands downwind of the lakes, often dumping snow that's measured in feet. In fact, last week, a small community in Oswego County, New York, just east of Lake Ontario, reported four feet in less than a day. But also last week, we got the chance to observe another much less common feature associated with the lake effect. You can see them here, these mini swirls on lakes Michigan and Huron. These are called mesoscale lake vortices. They occasionally form after the main lake effect snows are over. They're small areas of low pressure that typically have a weak counterclockwise circulation and bands of showers spiraling into their centers. Now to get these vortices, you first need the lower atmosphere to be unstable, so air rises over the lake. Now this requires a very large temperature difference between the water and the air at about 5,000 feet, usually at least 25 degrees. Now that's the same requirement as for the more typical lake effect snows, which form as strong winds behind a departing low pressure system blow that lake heated and lake moistened air onto the leeward side of the lakes. But lake vortices tend to form with relatively weak winds, closer to the center of the cold high pressure system that usually builds in behind the low. Without strong winds driven by the large scale pattern, a lake can actually create its own circulation. With rising motions over the water, air from the adjacent land moves out over the lake, what we would call a land breeze. So you get kind of a zone of converging air out over the water. Typically a small circulation forms somewhere along that convergence zone, often where the coastline has a lot of curvature, and then that small whirl spins up into a larger spiral. Lake vortices look impressive on satellite imagery, almost like mini tropical storms, but most of the time they're pretty tame. Their heaviest precipitation tends to occur in a trailing band over the lake, and when the center of the swirl moves onshore, it loses its heat source and usually dies quickly. So a location just inland may only get a couple of inches of snow. Lake vortices are most common over the western lakes where you can usually spot a couple each winter. I have seen them occasionally on the eastern lakes. Here's an example from a few years ago when there were vortices on Huron, Erie, and Ontario at the same time. Now the first refereed article in a weather journal about wintertime lake vortices was published in 1984 by then Penn State faculty member Dr. Greg Forbes, who's now severe weather expert at the Weather Channel, and John Merritt, who's now director of academic advising in the College of Earth and Mineral Sciences here at Penn State. Now today was one of those conventional lake effect days. Fred will tell us if any more are in our future in the extended forecast next.